independence referendum for West Papua has been presented to the United Nations. The document, outlawed by Indonesia, was apparently smuggled across the country and signed by 1.8 million West Papuans. Our PNG correspondent Eric Torchek joins me now from Port Moresby. Eric, talk us through the circumstances in which this petition was circulated through the country. Uh, in those areas and uh, in recent months uh, I suppose there's been allegations that um, the amount of repression from the Indonesian army in the West Papua province uh, has has been increasing uh, and, that, and that more people are being arrested so while this was happening uh, the agitation from the, the independence movement um, from within and also from expatriates uh, West Papua and expatriates around the world you know, has been gathering speed. Uh, there's been a number of pushes. Uh, it's been raised at international fora, including the uh, Pacific Islands Forum, uh, when Tony Abbott attended here in Papua New Guinea two years ago. And uh, it's, it's certainly been an issue that the West Papua independence movement has been trying to put on, on the table, uh, raising the issue of colonisation of the province by uh, Indonesians, particularly from the island of Java and, and Sumatra. Uh, and uh, it's something that, you know, the West Papua independence movement has been trying to get prominence for in the international community for some time. This is probably their most bold move, and it means that uh, they have achieved something, uh, a really uh, an engagement with the, the West Papuan population that they haven't before been able to do in the face of, uh, you know, the pressure from the Indonesian military and, and police. Uh, they've been able to get this petition uh, and get the, uh, you know, what would seem to be an extraordinary amount of signatures uh, uh, in favour of it, 70% of the population, the Melanesian population of West Papua, and, uh, and be able to present it at the United Nations. So for them, this is quite a significant moment. So the UN is now in receipt of this document. What could it prompt in terms of action? I think one of the things that the petition is asking for is for West Papua to be put back on the decolonisation list. Uh, it was removed from that list. So what happened is the Indonesian administration brought in colonists, uh, as I mentioned, uh, under a program called Trans Magrassi, uh, and it started creating regencies within West Papua, that's uh, administrative regions. Um, the, you know, the government within West Papua, the, the regional government there is, is dominated by, you know, by people who are, who are not from West Papua. Uh, and uh, also the business ownership and, and things like that as, as well. So, you know, that has really spurred the argument uh, that, that, you know, West Papua has been continuously colonised uh, throughout the last 40 years, or 50 years now, I'm sorry, uh, you know, of, of, of Indonesian rule. Uh, and so really what they want is for decolonisation of that province to be back on the agenda for uh, the native Melanesian population to be put to be empowered uh, and given a say in, in what happens in, in the province. Uh, but this would be a very significant thing if, the, if the, the key demand of the petition is an internationally supervised referendum uh, because there was a referendum in 1969, what was called the Act of Free Choice and what West Papuan activists call the Act of No Choice in which a small number of West Papuans uh, were asked to vote on whether or not to accept, uh, you know, to be part of Indonesia uh, following the withdrawal of the Netherlands. Uh, and it's, it's, it's been controversial for years, ever since 1969, uh, the, 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 low, the low amount of people voting and the fact that they allegedly were forced to vote uh, at gunpoint in favour of Indonesian rule uh, and amidst interference uh, has tainted uh, that vote in the eyes of West Papuan activists ever since and, and in the eyes of many in the international community. So what they really want is an internationally supervised referendum. Indonesia is, is likely to, to, to not, not, not accept that in, in any way uh, because it knows that there is an enormous amount of uh, disaffection with its rule in, in, the, in the Papua provinces. So, uh, yeah, it, it's, it, it would be a significant step if they could get traction for an internationally supervised vote to take place in West Papua. And so, Eric, just briefly, has the Indonesian government had anything to say about it yet? Well, uh, there, were, there has been some comments in the lead-up to the presentation of this petition which triggered uh, you know, Indonesia's right of reply. It, it dismisses the claims of, of, of human rights abuses and, and more particularly the, 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 most, uh, you know, the most strident claim, which is of genocide. Uh, the activists, uh, the independence activists from West Papua claim that there is a, a slow-motion genocide in, in West Papua. That's strongly rejected by Indonesian authorities. Uh, and uh, they, they also reject the claims of ongoing human rights abuses against activists and you know, people who support independence uh, from within 
the West Papua region. So uh, in Indonesia is likely to react uh, quite strongly to this, to this uh, demand for a referendum and, and uh, it, it will be lobbying very strongly against any international pressure uh, towards an internationally supervised vote. That's, that's for sure. That's, that's consistent with the way it's acted uh, uh, in, in response to previous attempts by, West Papuan, by the West Papuan independence movement. PND correspondent Eric Tortek. Former U.S.